Fanlights Podcast. Kyle here with Dimitri. And a very special guest. So I'm going to have introduce himself and maybe just say, you know, all the cool stuff he does real quick. What's up? I am Cody Ziegler. I have written for She-Hulk Attorney at Law, Rick and Morty, uh, Futurama, and also written some comic books, which I'm assuming the reason I'm, the main reason I'm here, Amazing yeah. Spider-Man, <laughs> Spider-Punk, and as of December 7th, Miles Morales, Spider-Man. That is what we are very, very excited for. And I tried <laughs> to have some questions outside of that. I get Dimitri's, it. I get it. Honestly, Miles brought Dimitri into comics with me. Like I brought him oh, down cool. Same here. spiraling yeah. path. My wallet has never recovered. <laughs> I'm going to have Dimitri uh, start us out. Yeah, hit me. Your favorite spider person, you know, Ooh, besides between... Miles and Peter. This is such an easy answer for me, but it's definitely Hobby. Hobart Brown. Like, that's my dude. That's my boy. You can look at me and see that I'm very much into, like, the punk <laughs> and metal aesthetic. So, like, having a punk Spider-Man that was also black was, like, right up my alley. So, like, he's tied with Miles, honestly, from, like, my favorite spider person. I almost excluded him from that question. I was like, ah, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Did you want to talk about your involvement with the She-Hulk show? Yeah, sure. I mean, obviously I was a huge fan. I mean, I say this to everyone who asks, you know, the end game was always like, I want to write for Marvel. Like that was like the dream job. So like getting that to be like my first basically TV writing job out the gate was a huge win for me. And I can't give enough thanks to Jessica, the showrunner, Jessica Gao for putting me on. But it's actually, that's the job that got me into like writing comics. Like her number two in the room was a dude named Zeb Wells, who I'm sure you both know from Amazing Spider-Man, Hellions, a bunch of great comics. But the reason that I got the Daredevil episode, which episode I wrote for She-Hulk was because they were discussing, you know, how do we want his powers to work within the MCU? Because like we've sort of seen him in like two different things now with like the TV show and like the movie. And they were just trying to fathom like how his powers work. And I happened to have a Mark Wade volume one Daredevil in my backpack. And I pulled it out to like a specific page where him and Foggy are walking across a street in New York and you see his powers going off and stuff. And they're all like, all right, this guy is obviously a big fan of this. Calm down. Don't pull any more comic books, but like, we appreciate your enthusiasm. And Zeb saw that. I was like, all right, this guy's one of us. Like I got to get him in like these, these comic book offices. So he got me a meeting with the Spider-Man office and like and that's how I got into writing comic books like it was purely because of Zeb's like that room means a lot to me not just from being a huge fan of the MCU and also a huge fan of Jen Jen Walter Sheehold but also like my dream job always was to like write Miles. I remember I was like, when he first came out, I was like, man, it'd be so cool to like write comic books for a living, specifically with Miles. And uh, if it wasn't for that room, I would not be able to have what I have right now. So I'm very thankful that like, I really, really love that show. A bunch of really funny writers and really talented people. And I think we had some really fun episodes. And again, I can't stress enough how cool it was to like have that be my first TV writing job was for She-Hulk for the MCU. We love the show. I mean, it was so refreshing too from general MCU. I mean, there's so much mm -hmm. of it now. So just yeah, yeah, yeah. so great. Oh, thank you. And with that, speaking of Zeb Wells, you want to mm -hmm. tell us about the cameo you had in the show real quick? <laughs> yeah. So I'm sure out of the millions of interviews that they've done by now, Zeb and Jessica and everyone, I'm sure people have talked about it, but there was this running bit in the room where one day Jessica brought in some hand that she had bought from like Costco or whatever. Like, oh, this is so good. It'd be so funny if like whenever the writer's like a good pitch or a good joke that she would pass out hand. Like, that'd be so funny. And then one day she showed up with an actual leg of ham that she bought from Costco and she would put it in the corner of the room and Zeb's job was to cut the ham and whenever someone had a like, good pitch he would literally pass out ham to the writer that had it so like it eventually became this thing where i think hawkeye and, and miss marvel were writing at the same time so it became this thing where like you know writers from like hawkeye would peek in like hey we heard this is the ham room can we get some ham They're like yeah we got you and it became this thing where like even kevin feige was like if we're going to do a cameo with the writers like we got to put the ham thing in there so like that's a long preamble for me to get to that which is like basically jessica was like hey you know we're gonna have this bit where she hulk you know breaks the fourth wall and goes to like the actual writer's room and talks a bunch of shit to you guys do you and zeb want to like come down and like be in it since you're both on the East Coast, we happen to be on the East Coast at the same time. Like, yeah, of course. Like, who would not want to, like, one, be in the MCU, but also, like, get to see how the sauce is just made? It was so cool. But, like, yeah, like, we walked down and, like, the room is, like, modeled after the actual room we're in. And, like, the actors that were there were all, all like, little, like, copy pastes of, like, the people that we actually had the rooms with. It was like, you know, it was like someone did, like, a creative fighter and, like, soul caliber of, like, your friend. It's, like, 15% off. Like, they had the same shoes and, like, the same clothes, but, like, their face is, like, just a little bit off. So it was really cool seeing, like, the fake versions of, like, of our friends that we had in the room so interesting seeing like how they actually shoot the show like you know tatiana comes in obviously with like the stuff on her face and like the little camera in front of her face mm. and she's on like a two foot high platform so she's actually six foot seven and they do like all of her takes and like she comes in and does the thing and then they fly out and like an actual six foot seven basketball player comes in with like <laughs> she has like green face paint and like 
a big muscle suit and like the green hair and stuff and she does a take it was really really cool like that was honestly the hardest secret was keeping that like that was so much harder not spilling that beans as opposed to being like oh right. yeah we're bringing daredevil back like, that was truly the hardest thing i had to keep secret for like three years like it was such a fun experience oh wow, wow. Kind of stoked. yeah that's really cool you spoke about the daredevil episode being your episode mm -hmm. are there any scenes that like watching with somebody you could say like that was me. Like any scenes that, you know, you can take credit for. Yeah, you I was um, a lot. I, thank you. I was actually very surprised. I mean, it, it speaks more to how good Jessica is as a showrunner, as a head writer, that like even half the stuff made it in. Like I was surprised, like when I was reading my script that they actually shot with, and I was like, man, I can't believe half these jokes made it in. Like, that's very nice of her. But there were two specific things that I really enjoyed. When I pitched the episode, I anchored it around the bar scene where it's Jen and Matt. And they're talking and he's like, you know, he, he gives her like the superhero speech because up until that point in the series, she's been like, I don't want to do this. I want to be a lawyer. Like, that's all that I want to do. Like, I don't care about being a Hulk or being in the Avengers. And his spill was like, you know, I think you could really walk both of those worlds and do like a lot of good. And like, basically whatever that speech is, I can't remember what I wrote verbatim, but something like Jen Walters can use the law to help people that fail the system and she can use the whatever. I can't remember exactly what I wrote, but like that was something that I pitched in the room. And like, that's something that like I wrote and made it in. It was really, really cool and powerful just seeing that because again like rewrote this in 2019 so like you know they said that yes charlie is going to be back for it but like you didn't know it was actually going to be him and like we haven't cast she hulk yet so like, you're really just like writing words on a page and like you don't know how it's actually going to turn out but like i remember when jessica was showing me the rough cuts and i was like oh this is cool like, they're saying the lines that i wrote and like it feels like a panel from a comic book you feel like you've seen that speech in so many different types of comics and it was really cool seeing that and this is just like one that i thought was really funny but like the hench versus goons speech bit that he does on the roof with jen was like another thing that i really had a lot of fun writing that i was surprised made it in because it was such a stupid like aside that came out of nowhere but like yeah those are my two favorite moments as far as like things that i wrote that i like actually made it in. I was very cool watching that on my couch. <laughs> Being like, oh, wow, these words that I wrote, someone actually said them. It was really cool. Really, really fulfilling moment. Probably the two favorite episodes, too. I looked you up on IMDb and <laughs> Craig of the Creek showed up. Yeah. And yeah. I've seen a few episodes of it before I even yeah. knew this was happening. So is there anything you want to say about like your involvement I, or how I, it um, for you? I, I love Craig of the Creek so much. That was my first actual like TV writing job. And I got oh, cool. that from this guy named Jeff Tremel, who is, you know, writing the uh, Spider-Man freshman year animated oh, series wow. for MCU. But man, like I got that job because a friend had written for that show and he's like, hey, there's this guy, Jeff, he's a, another big black nerd. And I think you guys would, would be friends. You want to like just get lunch? And like we got chicken wings one day. And after we spent like an hour and a half talking about like Dragon Ball Z and video games, we walked away and we're like, man, I think we're best friends, dude. He's like, yeah, I think we are. And he eventually got me in that room, but that show was so cool because like, you know, you've seen the show, but like for those who don't know, it's a show about this little kid named Craig, little black kid named Craig, and he goes to the creek and there's like just every type of kid is there. Like it's so many different types of kids. There's like Filipino kids, there's like, you know, Chinese kids, there's like Indian kids, Pakistani kids, like native kids, like just so many different types of people there that also represented like what the actual staff of the show was. Like so many people of color on the staff so many different queer types of people on the show it was so fun being in that room and like sharing stories like one of the episodes that i wrote was i think it's called king of camping it's craig and his cousin go camping got an episode where like his dad teaches him about like growing up and stuff and like there's this thing that his dad does where he builds a seep which is like you go to like ground near like running water like a river or something and you dig it out and it fills up with water and then like you place rocks in it and, like you basically make like a little a pool that you can drink out of or bathe in or whatever but like that's directly something that like my dad did as a kid because he grew up in the country with like no running water but like he talked me that as a kid so like being able to like write an episode that was basically inspired by my dad growing up was like a really uh powerful moment for me and i don't know if any other show would let us tell that type of story so like i'm always indebted to craig of the creek one because it's a fun show but also i loved working with everyone on there and like they really let people that wouldn't traditionally get to tell stories tell their stories and like if you have hbo max go watch it or if you can buy dvds or buy the physical media because it truly is like one of the best animated shows out there like the crew is so fun and fun and talented and they have some really 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 funny episodes in that show especially for like we call the kids tv show like there's some really funny stuff that happens in that show i yeah, know you can tell like it's not just made by yeah i don't want to you know harp on it but it's not made by one type yeah. of person yeah you know? exactly yeah there's like everyone in that crew gets to pitch and it, it shines through for the stories that they end up telling it's amazing generally too if you want to just say how you got into writing i mean mm -hmm. great stories of kind of your first projects which were enormous <laughs> just like enormous <laughs> projects but i guess generally how you got into it just was 
it a hobby? Was it just something you knew you wanted to do as your job? Yeah, I went to film school and I made a bunch of stuff there, a bunch of terrible stuff, a bunch of just garbage shorts, <laughs> a bunch of garbage scripts as you would make. But like, it's a thing that I always did. And when I first moved to LA, I just spent the weekends making stuff with like my friends, sketches, shorts, videos, whatever we could make. We would just like make things, animated stuff, live action stuff. We really just like, just put the hours into the 10,000 hours or whatever. So like, it came to the point where like, I just had body of work and like, I had the fun and the skill set. So the motivation to do stuff. So like, I just had it ready. So like the first writing job I got, like I said, was Craig of the Creek. And that was great just to like, learn like how to function in like a writer's room and like how to like pitch and like have the confidence and like how to like meet other people and like work and stuff because animation takes so long. Animation is like one giant meeting that lasts for like a year and a half. <laughs> the episode comes out. So like, you have to be open to collaboration. You have to be, I think, a pleasant person to be around. But also like those shows are just, there's a real communal aspect to it. Like when we would rap at the end of the day, there was like a communal like, PS4. We'd all play Dragon Ball Fighters and like, like we had like tournaments going on and stuff. It was really, really fun. But through from Craig of the Creek, I got She-Hulk because I had randomly met Jessica Gao, the showrunner, at like a random dinner one night. Like it was a bunch of friends. We would all go to this place and get like crab. Like we eat too much crab. Like that was our thing. And like we happily met her one night. So, oh yeah, I liked your episode of Pickle Rick. It was very funny. She's like, oh, thank you. And she followed me on Twitter and like we were joking stuff. And then just randomly one day I was producing podcasts at the same time. So like I was like on a podcast and like the host was like, hey, I can't tell you why, but someone heard you that thought you were funny. Do you have like a sample you can send? I was like, of course, here you go. And I happened to get a call for one day being like, Marvel wants to meet with you. I was like, why would Marvel want to meet with me? I think they got the wrong <laughs> dude. And I walk in and I see Jessica. She's like, hey, I couldn't tell you, but like I'm running She-Hulk. I met you. I thought you were really funny and I thought your tweets were funny and you seem like you'd be a good vibe for the show because they were specifically looking for like comic book MCU dudes. They're like, who are the people that can like talk about like what fans would be like excited for, which was like obviously mm -hmm. me and Zeb and another writer, Jackie Gale. They're like, we want to have a balance of like comic book nerds in the room, which is like me, Zeb, Jackie, and Gal, and then like just straight up comedy writers. So like they're very much like, we're going to hire you to like basically be a fan. And I was like, great. I could ask for nothing <laughs> less, my man. That's honestly the dream. And like just from there, like that's where all my other jobs just came from that basically because, you know, MCU is like a pretty big studio who consistently, I think, makes basically mostly pretty good stuff. And like all the jobs I got after that were like Robot Chicken was just because Jessica and Zeb had worked on Robot Chicken and like, hey, you're a giant nerd. This show's all about nerd sketches. I think that you should submit. And I got that. And then I got Rick and Morty after that because basically when all those new like Marvel Studio TV projects got announced, like, you know, the Miss Marvel, Hawkeye, all those shows were announced. Like all those new writers, we all followed each other on Twitter. And this dude named Jeff Loveness, he was like, hey, I think you're funny. I know we haven't met, but like, would you want to submit for Rick and Morty? I have to leave because I'm going to go to London to write Ant-Man 3. I was like, oh, flex on me. <laughs> yeah, flex King, I respect that. Wow. Like, of course, so like I got that job just because Jeff was another cool dude who would give me really great advice about comic books because he writes comics as well. He wrote one of my favorite backups and Miles Morales, and he's just like a really talented writer. He also wrote some of my favorite episodes of Rick and Morty. So like uh, really the through line for all this stuff of how I got in is like just community, a lot of community, a lot of being at the right place at the right time and having the stuff ready. So like I've been very lucky that I've worked on stuff that I actually care about, like that I would actually watch as a kid. Like I watched Rick and Morty as a kid. I watched Futurama as a kid. I watched Robot Chicken as a kid. Obviously, I read a ton of comic books as a kid. So, like, I've been very lucky that I get to make stuff that I actually would make 12-year-old me happy, which is the only thing I actually ever care about. <laughs> what a good story, though. Just, like, the evolution of being a fan. But, yeah, I've like, been very lucky, dude. Is, I wouldn't say luck. I would argue that it's deserving. Like, it's clearly deserving. Just, uh, thank you. I mean... You're definitely involved in more than I realized. Um, you know, <laughs> Nature, I give you credit for doing better research, but I went, we met you in New York, and I was like, uh, oh, "Yeah, Miles is gonna be great." Like as soon as we met you, like just the instant, like first impression, like this Miles run is gonna be fantastic. Ah, uh, right, thanks, so, man. Thanks. It's cool to hear. That was my first con. So it was my first time like meeting. Like first meeting con things. ever? Yeah, first con ever. Like I went to cons as a kid, but like mm -hmm. this is the first one I've been to where like people were there who knew what anything that I've actually ever done. Like right. I've never seen kids dressed up as like spider punk and stuff. It was really cool. Like just meeting fans and seeing people like, you know, seeing people that like buy the stuff. Like it's cool being mm -hmm. around like a bunch of like comic and anime fans. I think for me, it's like you just see them in a bubble. Like you see them on like Twitter and Instagram, but like being around them is like such a fun energy I like to be around. I think it's cool too, because I mean, you'll experience it more and more as time passes now but you're a celebrity <laughs> like and and when that convention happens you're the celebrity you know like the line it's a matter of how big and long will it be the next year you know <laughs> 
<laughs> and like we've seen it we've been going to new york for what 10 years oh wow we've I mean, been doing it together for so long it's like yeah yeah we see people go from you just walk up to the table to i'm not waiting three hours i saw them last yeah. year you know so funny because i was next to zeb at the convention it was so funny being like people are waiting in line to see zeb like <laughs> this guy like we text the dumbest things back and forth like they want to see this guy funny that you say that because that did pop into my mind it's like oh zeb's like a celebrity like who would have thought like my little it's boy so zebby cool. wells is out here he's so cool he's, he's cool just so dude. cool yeah, he's funny as hell, too. And honestly, we were, like, looking for people to interview. Mm -hmm. Like, we already had mm -hmm. a list. And yeah. I didn't think we were going to just find you so easily. <laughs> and as soon as we found you, and as soon as I, like, talked to you about Miles, I was like, yeah. oh, I can go home. <laughs> you can oh, go home for you. the day. Like, that's uh, it. Thanks, man. It was so premeditated. We were like, he is number one. We're going to make a TikTok out of him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you did. Like, it was nice meeting you guys. Like, yeah, truly, no, like, I had such a fun experience meeting a bunch of cats out there. Like, it was such a pleasant and fun experience. Excited to do more of those. Yeah, I'm super antisocial. And like, I love being behind the camera. But at cons, like, I flip a switch. I'm like, yeah. I got to put it all out there. Yeah, man. But with all of your writing that you've done so far, I kind of want to give you the opportunity to say things you still want to do. I mean, your career mm. is super early. Even though you yeah. hit so many milestones already, <laughs> like from TV to comics to movies, is there any characters, franchises that you really would like to get into in your career? Oh, man. I mean, look, I'm a huge Aliens fan. Like, I love the Xenomorphs. Like, I love that creature. I mean, even the first three movies are honestly, I think they're all pretty, pretty solid. But like, truly, like, the Aliens is such a fun franchise. Did you guys watch Prey, the uh, Predator sequel, prequel yes. that they dropped? Yeah, yeah that yeah. was Fantastic. such a perfect, like, sequel, mm -hmm. prequel. Mm -hmm. Like, it was so fun, so simple, like, which is like something that I'm always like, yeah, like, I like that they just take this premise and they make it super simple. It's a Comanche lady fighting a space bounty hunter and she doesn't have guns. The guns take so fucking long to load that they're yeah. useless. Like, I love all that. So, like, anything with aliens would be super fun. Like, I love Blue Marvel. Like, I love that character so much. I think he's such a cool concept, a cool take on, like, the Superman. I love, like, horror comedy stuff. Like, I would like to make my own take on, like, a Shaun of the Dead. Like, honestly, I'm just, like, stoked, like, continue to make stuff. Like, those are all, like, dream jobs. And also, anything with Star Wars. Like, dude, give me, like, a black person with, like, a light lightsaber game over like that they didn't have to turn it on they could just like hold it and look at it like that, that would be like enough for me like that would truly be like a, a god dream come true you might have already answered it but are there any story doesn't have to be comics but any stories that inspired you oh yeah the thing that actually got me into like superhero comics proper like i used to read like indie stuff and like you know some of the more like imprinted stuff like remember preacher like the first like comic run that like i read all the way through but it wasn't like you know he's not a superhero but like the ultimate comic line was like what got me into like not only like superheroes but like marvel stuff ultimate spider-man ultimate fantastic four ultimate x-men enemy like ultimate hulk versus wolverine the ultimates like i loved all that stuff because that was the first time i read comics where like the whole idea behind the ultimate line was that like we're starting fresh we're starting new like you don't have to worry about 60 years of lore or backstory like you can just like come in fresh and when characters die they stay dead you know usually like there's always someone that comes back but like that was such a like thing that got me into it. i was like oh this is like cool like i always thought Captain America was kind of hokey, but like reading the Ultimates, like, oh, he's kind of an asshole. He has like PTSD. I was like, oh, this, mm -hmm. this kind of makes sense. Like, I thought he was just a guy that talked about freedom all the time, but like <laughs> having him have that take was like pretty cool. But like, that was a huge influence on me. And even outside of like superhero stuff, like, I really liked this sort of like creator owned like comics, like Fear Agent. It was this 20, 30 issue run. I think it was an image comic. It was really, really fucking cool. It was like a retro sci fi futuristic type deal. Like, you know, the big bubble space helmets, like ray guns and stuff. It was also like hyper violent and also very depressing with comics that were really influential in me. And then honestly, obviously, like the first like Miles Morales, like Ultimate Spider-Man runs, like I still have, they did like a combined one through three issue, like when it first came out because they all sold out. And I've had that bagged and boarded for like 10 years, I guess, uh, across on the desk right behind me. So like, those are like the comics that really got me into like wanting to make stuff. And just for like the movie side of things, like Shaun of the Dead, like I love that movie so much. It's like one of my favorite movies. It's the first movie I watched that made me be like, oh, I want to do this for a living. Like I cannot stress enough, like how, just how well made it is and how funny it is. And like also also kind of how scary it is every time i watch i'm like oh this is the dream like this is what i want to do this is why i do the stuff that i want to do i'm going to tell a quick miles story i must oh, have told a hundred times probably 10 times on the podcast but here we go <laughs> just to show me and dimitri like how tight for so many years mm -hmm. so when we're really into miles like he's our number one like yeah, yeah, yeah. you know we're getting pacelli sketches <laughs> we're getting marquez sketches yeah, we're yeah hunting down bendis all this so at the time investing in number ones and building mm -hmm. our collection but you know the variant that goes for like a lot of money yeah of the first appearance so yeah. 
I had one in a box, bought it, forgot about it. Dimitri sends me eBay link. It was a 9-6. He goes, I don't have the money. It's only 200 bucks. You should buy it. It'll be worth a little more eventually. Yeah. So I got it for 200 bucks. Sent it off to CGC, got it signed, came back a 9.8. Had it forever. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it came back 9.8. I said, oh, Dimitri really set me up. Like, I feel yeah. bad. So I gave him my raw one, sent it out, 9.6, got it signed. That book's worth, what, 50? <laughs> <laughs> so we basically gave each other the most expensive thing we'll ever own. Oh, you that's know? great. Yeah. <laughs> like, literally, like, gifted to each other accidentally Crazy. yeah that's beautiful but that's just like how much miles like means to us well, that's really cool you know, to like, hear that i remember reading the first comic and like i'm like oh he looks like my cousins like he looks like people that i grew up with like mm. i was like man i didn't know how powerful it was going to be until like i read it and it was in the moment i was like oh man this is like such mm. a cool thing i'm really hoping that like other kids will like get that like whether it's like miles or cindy moon or whoever that spider person is like i'm just excited for like people to see themselves in like a uh, superhero and like oh wow this could be me if i wanted to do that yeah i always have this running choke of anytime miles i see anything any kind of iteration outside of the original ultimate run kill yeah. peter parker please just kill him i love the way bendis did it of like yeah the way he killed him saw it happen on tv yeah. i'm like oh crap now i have to go be yeah. a hero but segueing with miles we're gonna start to ask some miles questions now with that Dimitri, oh here hit me man hit me oh, tell us about how you got the new ongoing for miles like, what were your initial thoughts? So when I had my first meeting with Nick Lowe with the Spider-Man office back when Zeb hooked me up with him after the Daredevil thing, and I was very much like, hey, I love Spider-Man. Like, I'm more interested in writing. Like, if there's black Spider-Man come to me, like, obviously I love my boy Peter, but like Miles is who I am really into. He's like, great. It's so like my first comic was like a five or 10 page backup for like Miles Morales 25. And I think he liked it. Obviously, they kept asking me to do stuff. So like, I ended up writing like three or four things for like Miles, like shorts for Miles from like the first year. And then they gave me Spider-Man. Spider-Punk. And I think that was like the test run to see if I could actually handle doing like an actual run. And basically when that was over with like, hey, do you have a take on Miles? What do you want to pitch for Miles? And I gave them my pitch and it was very much like, you know, Miles has seen a lot in the past three years, 42 issues or whatever. Like he's gone to space. He's gone to multiple dimensions multiple times. Like he's been in like his own like champions, his own Avengers thing. Like he's seen and done a lot. He's also watched like a giant god eat his original universe. Like he's gone through so much. Like what if we like sort of strip things down and like make it more like more street level for like a little bit like you can still have like those big action set pieces but like have it basically be him be like a friendly neighborhood spider-man for like a little bit since he's gone on so many adventures i was also like yeah it'd be cool to give miles to like so many strong black women in his life whether it's his mom or tiana even like i guess it's his sister now or it's, it's his friend circles i was like it'd be cool to have his mentor like have like a black mentor like he i think he would love that i think he would need it also like we've had at this point 10 years of like peter being there form different versions of peter being there for him. i think it'd be cool to like just like switch that up a little bit and like that that's where I landed on like having Misty Knight and they're like, yeah, that sounds great. That sounds really cool. Like, let's do it. So like, you know, I was very lucky that they let me do what I want to do basically with it. And like, I really want to explore the relationship between uh, Miles getting acquainted with being a street level hero again, and also doing it with like a mentor who's maybe not as polished as Peter, <laughs> you know, this really is like her job, literally, like she's a hero for hire. Like she's clocking in with like, you know, Colleen to do work and she's like a detective and stuff. And so she's like, you know, I'm obviously a good person, but I also have a little bit more of an edge than I think Peter has when it comes to like patrolling and stuff. And like, it's been fun watching their dynamic and go back and forth. But like, yeah, they liked all that and let me do a run. So I'm really excited for it to come out and hopefully it will resonate with people. That's obviously the end goal for all this stuff. But like, I really am just excited to like have like Misty featured in like a big ongoing book and like have it become like an official part of like the Miles like canon and, and repertoire. Like I'm really excited to see like where the relationship goes over the next couple of issues. It kind of feels like one of those things where how do no one else think of that like you mentioned that the first time we heard you say that it was new york like that was what we got you to say oh man like that's really good like that's really good <laughs> i mean i wrote for like four or five issues of amazing spider-man we had a thing called the beyond board which is like me and pat gleason zeb wells saladin and like kelly thompson and kelly wrote three or four issues that featured colleen and misty knight pretty heavily i was like oh there's a, such a fun dynamic and like, when they're introduced into like the spider-man world i was like people should do that more often so i think that honestly that was like a small seed for me being the inspiration for that was like just seeing how much fun it was watching the Dodge of the Dragon interact with like Ben Riley Spider-Man. I was like, this seems like a fun dynamic. Like I would love to see Misty have more of that, particularly with a younger Spider-Man, which is like Miles. Like I'm really excited. I'm glad that Kelly wrote those amazing comics so that I could be inspired by them. Like honestly, like I now that I say it out loud, I think that's where the germination <laughs> came from. I love it. I love the grounded part too. Like I'm ready for okay. it. I enjoyed the last run. Yeah. I don't know if you can talk about if you're gonna bring over any of the clone stuff because there was a lot of clone stuff in the last one. I can't say anything 
but like yeah. there's plans for them. Like I definitely enjoy. Oh, okay, um, I'll take I that. Definitely <laughs> enjoy. Yeah, I think Tellen did a really fucking great job making the clone saga work for like Miles' angle. They did some really great work, like just making that thing work as good as it did, mm -hmm. and to, like give like two characters that you actually care about, especially one that just says Glorp. Like it's hard to make a okay. character that says okay. nothing actually resonate with people. So the fact that he was able to do that was like hats off like he the bar is set very high so like i'm gonna try to stick the landing with that because it's a very hard to make and care about a character who does not really talk that much how was it working with federico great i met him for the first time at comic-con i didn't realize that he was fully a man from italy that did not speak that much english like all of our talks have been just through email so we had a signing where like he was like hey man i don't speak that good english can you just like handle all this i was like i got you brother <laughs> he's a fantastic art like you guys have seen his art by this really great he does obviously super cool like high production value stuff where like he has like the soft focus and he always has like John Woo like pigeons flying everywhere every time that Miles is like flipping around the city but he also does like the small emotion moments really really well too like he can really nail the acting for that stuff he just turned in some pages for issue four that has a really emotionally intense like flashback and like just the uh, creativity he brought to that like much different style than like the actual normal book is like he has these really beautiful like swooping borders that he does for like he's really really talented like I've been lucky enough to work with a bunch of really talented artists and the bar's been set very high so I'm excited to see how much fun Federico seems to be having drawing stuff and also how much collaboration there is and so far particularly when like you have such a, an intense language barrier but he's super cool like I truly cannot wait to, like once the book gets cooking and like the big action sequences start happening like I'm really excited for people to just like take their favorite panel art and like share it and stuff like I just got this really cool image back from the fourth issue it's just like Miles and Misty heading into action it's really fucking cool I'm really excited I can't wait for people to like <laughs> see that spread nice can we expect the uh, romance between Miles and Starling to continue? Yeah, definitely. Like I said, there are three pillars for him when it comes to like the women in his life. And like Starling is definitely one of them. I think Saladin also did a fantastic job creating that character and like having that mm -hmm. relationship flourish for three years. I think she really is sort of a rock to Miles. And like, I think a lot of my run would be like him, like sort of figuring out that place because it's sort of like a through line for like a lot of these like Spider-Man or spider characters in general is that like, I must protect the ones that I love. I can't have my secret identity getting out and stuff, but like, Miles is in a unique position where, like, his parents know his identity. Like, they're cool with it, mm -hmm. as cool as you can be. And, like, you know, Starling's not, like, a damsel in distress. Like, she can very much handle herself. So she's like, you know, you don't need to worry about me, dude. Like, you should worry about yourself. Like, I got this. Like, I can handle I can fly, dude. I can fight. So, like, it's a lot of the dynamic will be, like, I think Miles trying to, like, overcome that. And, like, that's going to be, I think, a little bit of tension in the relationship. But, like, you know without spoiling anything like it's just like a conversation that they will be having i think over the next couple of issues and i think it'll be hopefully interesting territory that people haven't seen before i have a spoiler question i wanted to try and ask you. <laughs> <laughs> i do plan to release this like the monday before the number one comes oh out. fun cool if that gives you a little more trust with me but Literally, the question is, anything you could tell us, and how many issues do you have in mind? You don't have to say, like, oh, well, I have a 12-arc story set, but just, like, <laughs> how much, I guess, you have in you. Not necessarily what you're going to do, but mm. how long do you think you could go with it? Well, I originally pitched 12 issues with, like, I have no idea if they'll ask me back. But there is conversations for like multiple years after that. They're like, in your back pocket right now, have a plan for 12. But also, don't be surprised if you do more than those 12. So like, that's all that I will say. So like, that's cool. okay, I have cool. a solid in and out for 12 for sure. And then a Google Doc with a bunch of other ideas if it goes more than those 12. Very cool. And then, of course, any little teases you could possibly give us? You know, I think the littlest tease I could possibly give is there will be some fun crossover at some point next year between various enemies that want to do harm to miles and mm. maybe the greater new york all that i can and will say because i haven't okay. written it yet <laughs> <laughs> <All right. That's laughs> fair. it's something yeah i was hoping pierre would show up for this he's got the voice for it i made like, a powerpoint <laughs> game show oh hell yeah all right the game is called name that web oh all right, production yeah. value, respect. There it is. <laughs> there it is. That's so funny. Right. 10 10 off the jump. 10 10, dude. No, no, it's great. This is great. <laughs> There's no real point to most of this, but we'll just see how many you can get. <laughs> All right, let's see. All right, there we have a red foot. I'm assuming it's either Devil Dinosaur or it's the T-Rex Spider-Man. I can't remember what the proper name of him was, but it's like a Spider-Verse character. So is it Spider-Dinosaur? It is Spider-Rex. Yeah, Spider-Rex. That's it. Yes. Go. So everyone yeah. here has some kind of spider or something on them. Okay. Uh, I will try and trick you at one point, I think. But okay. yeah, that's basically the theme is a spider person. <laughs> I can't 
can't believe I got that uh, from like just one so, foot. I read way too many comics. Hey, you might do way better than expected because I really <laughs> went overboard with this. All right, next one. Oh, it's someone crocheting a spider symbol. It looks to be like a lady. They have like a little point needle thing in their hands. They're sitting in some sort of like leather bound chair. Like there's a button to the left of their midsection. Is this Madam Web? You are very close. Uh -huh. Spider Ma'am. Damn. Now you're okay, saying to yourself, well, why are the two answers next to each other? That's odd. <laughs> Oh, hey. what's going on, guys? Hey, Late up? entry for Panel Oaks Podcast. <laughs> not the first time. Oh, my God. What's going on, Cody? Hey, what's up, man? So, nice wait, to what... meet you. Oh, wait. Is it time? It's time. I'm, I made it for that. It's All right, time. guys. It's time. that time that everyone was waiting for. Pierre's voice. <laughs> it's the versus battle. That's right. Oh, the thing shit. that everyone was waiting for. Spider-X oh, versus spider Man. Oh, boy. <laughs> Who do I think will win in a fight? I mean... Size-wise, obviously, Spider-Rex looks more intimidating, but I see this older lady in a chair. I'm, I'm going to put my money on Spider-Man. I feel like she's going to have, obviously, all the spider powers that a spider has, obviously, a Spider-Man, but also all the harm that an old grandma has. So I was assuming she would charm her way out of this battle. She would talk Spider-Rex down from a fight and then maybe bake him some, like, dinosaur cookies or something like that. I think you're absolutely right. <laughs> That's a bonus point right there. All right, oh, next. thank God. Oh. Let's see. Green skin looks like Jin's costume. She Hulk. Is it a spider She Hulk? Like a variant? That's of... all it is. <laughs> wow. Do you know who that artist is by chance? Chrissy's Zulu. Wow. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. That's cool. Next. The iron yeah. spider who's in there. So see, gotta, black and gold. I'll give you a little mm -hmm. hint. He only wore a <sighs> few issues of the oh, last. man. Miles. Oh, wow. I forgot. That oh, was only a few issues. I got nothing. I'm blinking. I have no idea. You're going to be know. mad. Oh. <laughs> Of course. It is, it is Iron Spider, uh, but it's Aaron Davis. Yeah, Best Aaron known Davis. Prowler. Yeah. I wish he just kept that suit forever. Uh, yeah, that's a sick suit. Forget Prowler. He needs to just be Iron Spider. Yeah, that's it. All right, now they got to fight. Versus. Oh, uh, man, this is really tough. You know what? My first love is my girl, She-Hulk. I think, obviously, you know... Aaron has the street smarts and the history of fighting in a street style. He also he's a very good hand-to-hand -hand combatant. But I think She-Hulk... In this version, if she has the proportional strength of a She-Hulk and a spider and the spider athleticism and the dexterity, I think she's going to come out on in. I think she'd web him up and then break his spider arms, like the little mechanical mm -hmm. arms. And then she'd take him to court and she would win. She'd be the <laughs> perfect prosecutor and she'd win. She'd ruin his day altogether. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. In you know, more ways than one. That. I love the fact that you put a little story to each <laughs> fight here. You know, it shows off your creativity, you know? <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm not trying to flatter you too much here, but I think that's pretty, pretty awesome. I'm imagining it right here in my head. I'm like, wow, oh, this is, it makes sense. <laughs> Definitely. So I think he wins that one, too. Oh, this one I know. It's uh, Captain Miles Morales, Captain Spider-Man. That variant that got him? Yeah, 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 there we go. Yeah. I've seen that artwork a lot. Yeah. That was one of my favorite variants. Obviously, I wrote the What If Captain America, but, like, I was a huge fan of this variant. I was hoping that they would secretly make it, like, a suit option in, like, the Miles Morales mm -hmm. Spider-Man game. Oh, Spider Boy. Yeah, Spider Boy from the amalgamation crossovers. Super Boy, right, was like the DC, and it was mixed with Peter Parker, Spider Man. I, I did some digging on this story because I was like, is it just merged? Apparently, it's, he doesn't actually have fighter powers. He has gravity manipulation powers, which are similar to Spider Man okay. powers. His mm -hmm. gun is a web gun, mm -hmm. but Peter Parker is actually responsible for making him have powers. Like Peter Parker fighting. bit him? Is that yeah. Like that? yeah, he got bit by a radioactive Peter <laughs> Parker. That's actually exactly how it went, Pierre. Ah, <laughs> uh, man. So, this fight, I think, I mean, as much as I love the Captain America Miles Morales suit, I think if Spider Boy is even half as strong as Superboy in the DC comics, like he's probably soloing half of Marvel <laughs> roster to begin with. I think he's going to win in a raw strength, but I think they're both sweet boys. And I think they will come to a pretty a non violent conclusion. They'll talk their way out of this actual fight, but like they're going to fight for a little bit and Superboy will ultimately be winning that fight. But then Captain America, Miles Morales, like, hey, we're not enemies. Is your mom named Martha too? <laughs> to Pierre's point, I hope you're taking notes on these short stories here. I'm secretly taking the notes and I'm going to pitch them all. So sorry. Oh, shit, this is a claw. It looks like it might be from like a spider verse thing is it the spider-man has like six arms he's like half tarantula like he's like pretty feral is it that spider-man we need a name cody we need a name ah fuck i don't remember his name um, spider-man i don't know trapdoor spider-man i don't remember his like actual <laughs> actual name <laughs> All, All right. very similar, but accurate, but also wrong. What is it, Kyle? The horror story that they did? Oh, yeah. I think it was a miniseries. Yeah, yeah. I read it. Definitely was savage. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He like, was it's close. like eating a bunch of people and stuff, right? Like making little yeah, cocoons and eating yeah. a bunch of people. Yeah. Yeah, but then at the end of it, like he cocoons himself and then comes out in like a sick costume. So, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. So he's like back to being Peter Parker, but he still has a savage mind. Yeah. That's, that's cool. cool. Oh, we have um, here. Is this Spider's Man? There are two different Spider's Mans. There's like this one that's like a bunch of sentient spiders, but then there's also. I think it was called like After X, whatever that mini was with like Alex Ross doing the art. There was a character named Spider's Mans who I think his power was like telepathy or like reality warping or something bizarre like that. It was a really weird character. Mm. So I was surprised that there's two different one named Spider's Man. Sorry, that was a long answer. But yeah, that's the history of the Spider's Man. What's funny, like each spider thinks it's Peter Parker. And like, <laughs> yeah. you know, like a hive mind kind of thing, I guess. And then of course, Pierre. Oh, so now oh, we have a versus boy. battle. Oh boy. I mean, Savage Spider-Man was like doing the work. Like he got a bunch of bodies. I wonder, oof, I feel like there's a reality where Spider's Man's can just keep adding spiders to him maybe and he can overwhelm him in that regard. That would be my end if I had to pick a win. Or maybe Savage Spider-Man, since he's like the big spider, he can control all the other spiders. So like maybe he just makes them join him. Like maybe that's what he does. Like he, he gets rid of the like little hive mind. Like, hey, join me. I'm the guy running the show now. Because he's the biggest one. I like it. Yeah, because he's the biggest one. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That. That'd be cool. Good. Great answer. All right. So Thank we're on the last you. two now. These okay. are all yours, by the way. These are all your yeah, verses slash what ifs. <laughs> Might not spend too much time on. Oh, right. oh, oh, I know those converses anywhere. Spider punk number one, baby. Right. Spider punk nice. number one. Yeah. It's my boy. Now what about oh, this? no. I got to do this. Oh, no. I'm going to break my heart. That's. Oh boy, this is going to hurt. A fist balled up with a venom blast going off, and it is from Miles Morales Spider Man number one that I'm doing. And oh man, oh, you guys are so cool. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, boys. what we have here for you, it was all fun and games oh, no. until this one. We have a Spider Punk versus oh, Spider Man. Oh man, oh boy, this is so hard. You know, so this is how I think the fight will go. The first half of the fight, Hobie will be getting a bunch of hits in because he's a little bit more unhinged than Miles when it comes to fighting. He's not afraid to hurt himself. He's got a big, a lot of fajita energy was how we would describe him when we were writing the book like not afraid to like get his arm broken or get a bloody nose to like win the fight and then i think skill wise and experience miles would end up winning ultimately because one he has the same power set but also venom blast and also he could turn invisible and he's been doing a little bit more so i think eventually miles would win the fight but the first half spider punk is definitely winning and then miles would subdue him with like a venom blast and then they would be like we know we shouldn't be fighting each other it's osborne that's the real villain and then they would go and beat up you know whatever osborne that is in this universe well, I, I agree I accept that as an answer. I, Thank I like you. it. <laughs> I take it. You ultimately you win. We all win, you know? <laughs> that was fantastic. So that was the fun part. We have a few easy questions now. Pierre, I know you really like Spider-Punk. If there's anything you really want to get into. Yeah, huge fan of Spider-Punk. Thank you. The whole series. So Spider-Punk, right? So... I don't know the character other than your book, personally. Yeah. Is this where you really get introduced to him? He popped up in the original Spider-Verse run that Dan Slott did. And the way that he was created is because Dan told the artist, hey, we need, I think it was like Spider-Man UK or British Spider-Man. And his artist drew that. And he's like, this is really cool design, but like, that's not what I'm looking for. Like, we need something else. So like, it was sort of like a happy accident that that sort of stuck around. And I think he had maybe a couple of backups. Like, there wasn't a lot of stuff out there that he was in. Like, he popped in like a couple like 10 page things things and like a couple like you know like tie-in books but like he didn't have like an actual proper run where like you should like learn more about like what his universe is and like who he interacts with but like before i got the book it was basically you knew him you knew their version of the incredible hulk and they had their captain anarchy but like that was really it like you didn't know who he hangs out with like who the big bads are of this place like really gave us like a lot of room to like just basically create this world so i was pretty stoked for that yeah definitely like the world i felt like i got really dragged in between your writing and then also the art style was just like perfect justin for... is so good up until that point i have not had that much fun collaborating with the uh, an artist i've worked with like a lot of like texting back and forth like our favorite manga panels he was like i'm tired of people punching and kicking so like we were sharing like wrestling moves and stuff that they could use in fights and stuff it was like super super fun him and jim i think they really elevated the material in such a unique way where like every time we would send an email we'd be like this is the most fun we've ever had writing a thing or drawing a thing or coloring a thing like truly across the board everyone was so excited to like to make the book and like we were so excited that marvel let us make the book that we were making like they really didn't edit much out we we're like hey we want to have the hulk smash a bunch of cops can we do that they're like yeah sure like 
go for it, man. Like they truly like let us do what we wanted to do. It was really, really fucking cool, dude. Yeah. It really felt like a home run, honestly, of a book. Oh, so thank you, man. Congrats on that for sure. I just want to at least put that in because again, <laughs> I'm a big fan of it. But any yeah. comics that you see yourself picking up this week. So I'm gonna drop it the week of miles so you can nonchalantly <laughs> throw in your own book. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Definitely pick up my miles. But it's funny enough, like I'm pretty out the game with like getting current stuff. Like obviously I'll pick up Amazing Spider Man every now and then, but like I usually wait for the trade paperbacks just because it's easier for me to digest them. But like, I think if I was to theoretically go to my comic book shop, Secret Headquarters here in LA is the one that I go to, I would probably pick up Amazing Spider-Man to support my buddy Zeb. And then this is like sort of just like the window shopper in me. If I see any cool like art for like an indie comic that just has like a cool book, like uh, even if it's like issue seven, like have no context, like I'll just buy it straight up. Like I'll just buy where it has the cool art, especially if it's like been black and white or it looks like it was made by a bunch of people just like trying to get their shot. Those are the things that I will probably end up buying. That's cool. So what about anything you're following? It doesn't Ooh. have to be current. It could be manga. It could be whatever you're reading. Yeah, it's funny enough. Um, I just got into Chainsaw Man. I have the oh. first volume <laughs> over there and it's so <laughs> insane. Like it's truly the one of the craziest things I've ever read where like I would see a bunch of people posting images and stuff and I was like, oh, this is like a funny Photoshop shit post. And they're like, no, this is the actual comic book. Like this is what they do in the actual comic. It's, it's really, really cool. I've been reading that and I've been rereading when I worked on Rick and Morty, there was this dude named Rob Schraub, who was one of the writers, and he wrote the Scud comic. If anyone's familiar with that back in the 90s, but like he sent me basically like the anthology of Scud, and like I just been reading Scud, and it's such a weird, funny, quirky, like little 90s like indie comic about like a disposable assassin. It gets really, really fun, but like Chainsaw Man is like the thing that's been like taking a hold of me for the past like week and a half. A lot of that, a lot of watching the anime. I started watching the anime too. Like it's just somehow even crazier than the comic book. Please pick up that series. Like if you're looking for like a wild manga, check out Chainsaw Man. It's fucking insane. It's crazy. Definitely. I'm on board with all of that. <laughs> I think Kyle can say that too. Any other writing projects you want to promote or hint at? You know, I have no idea when it actually comes out, but we got the first episode color back for Futurama and it's like, wow, it's like Futurama. It's like the show that I remember watching as mm -hmm. a kid. It's like that comes out, I'm assuming, some time <laughs> next year. Oh, I'm wow. really excited for that. For people to see that. And I think Rick and Morty hopefully will be out by then, the season that I did. I did not write this episode, but the episode that I watched at the time of this recording it was called analyze piss i think it's episode seven or eight might be like the funniest things i've ever watched like it's such a stupid funny episode i remember reading the script like a year ago and i was like this is insane how they're gonna make this work and like it's really funny so like check that out i did not write it i had nothing to do with it other than like reading a script a year ago and laughing my ass off like check those things out but yeah i think futurama and rick and morty like the nearest like writing projects i have that i can actually promote that will be out sometime in 2023 very very cool yeah i watched that episode last night of rick and morty it was <laughs> nutty <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> and futurama i mean that's so cool that you're involved in that thank you yeah it's a great job it's super super fun everyone's super funny i think we're gonna have some really fun episodes that hopefully people will also enjoy as much as i do no, absolutely just to wrap this up now where can mm -hmm. everyone follow you? check me out yay for zig on instagram you can tell it's me because it's just a bunch of usually comic art and then a bunch of pictures of food so like that's where i be at that's where i stay whenever i have like events or stuff popping up that's where i'll post about things but yeah follow me on there and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy the stuff that i post well thank yeah. you for being on panelist podcast um, of course man i think i could say for all of us we all adore you for the lack of better words <laughs> thank you <laughs> everything i've seen and read of yours fantastic and oh thank you miles have i read it yet no but i absolutely <laughs> know it's going to be my number one book thank you so guys i'm super excited thank you it's such an honor thank, thank you, you so definitely, much definitely yeah, of course it. nice meeting you all I sound like crap anyway, so I'm sure yeah. it's fine. I've been coughing and muting myself. I'm even sick. Tuesday night, I was like, man, I really am like uh, bummer, dude. Panelist podcast. All right, you know what? I do need Pierre for this. I hunt. <laughs> I need, I need his voice. That's a fantastic. Pierre, I'm bringing you in. Get him in here. Oh! What did I get brought in for? Sorry. Panelist podcast. Ver. <laughs> did you cut him out? Well, apparently, when I hit the space bar. <laughs> While selected uh, on beer, it removed. Uh, it was so good beer. I'm sorry. I swear that was an accident. All right. One more time. <laughs> and I'm back once again. That's right, guys. Panelist podcast. I mean, oh, do I have to do uh, the I mean, verses really... again or am I good? I mean, if you want to jump in, it's much better than what I'm doing here. <laughs> all I have is the verses. That's it. That's all I have. All right. Solid. 
panel this podcast. I'm a little nervous. I'm not gonna lie. Oh no, don't be. I'm a nobody. <laughs> this is the first one that's getting me real nervous, but I'm actually fanboying a little bit. Panel this podcast. We want you again whenever we can. Yeah, let me know. I got shit going <laughs> we on. We want you. you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got you. Thanks again. Hope you feel better. First of all, thanks for yeah, no, progressively uh, getting worse. Flu. I don't know if you can hear yeah. it. <laughs> he'll, he'll be fine. He'll be yeah. okay. Yeah. Nice meeting all you guys. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your night. No, yeah, yeah you too. For- Later, y'all.